Hello, my name is Matthew Randall, and in this tutorial, we're going to look at using Motion Builder to animate um, inanimate objects uh, using constraints. Um, so, typically, when we've used Motion Builder in the past, what we've done is we've taken bipedal motions so or motion capture on, 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 a, in, 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 on a bipedal on a person, and then uh, retargeted that to a bipedal character. Okay. Um, but actually what we can do with Motion Builder is we can actually use constraints to kind of work with motion and use motion as a tool for uh, moving other objects in a more flexible manner. So to demonstrate that, what I've got here is I've got a lamp which I've downloaded from, um, I'm just going to move this across here. Hang on. So you've got it on your screen. There we go. Uh, a lamp that I've downloaded from Turbo Squid. Uh, and I've also got a motion of someone jumping. Um, now, I didn't record this motion on our motion capture system, but there's no reason why we couldn't have. Uh, but I just downloaded this from the uh, motion capture database from Carnegie Mellon University. I think if you just type in motion capture database into Google. Uh, it will come up and if you're interested in uh, Motion Builder, so you'll get a link to this page and if you're interested in Motion Builder, you can see that uh, they've converted it into BVHs that work in Motion Builder here. So if you click on this button and if you click on this one, so you've got some Motion Builder friendly versions. There we go and you can access um, loads of Motion Builder friendly motions and also you can download the list of motions uh, as a Word document so it will tell you what motions are in each. Uh, of these files. So a really good re resource uh, if, if you want uh, a load of motions to work with and they all work in Motion Builder. Brilliant. So back into Motion Builder, uh, this is what I've uh, ended up with. Okay, so I'm just going to go and play this. Okay, here we go. I'll give it a bit more space here, we can see it in a bit more detail. So you can see that basically I've kind of got the, the head of the lamp constrained to the person's head and uh, and the base of the lamp constrained to someone's foot. So when they do a kind of jumping motion, we get our Luxor lamp moving with it. Okay, brilliant. Okay, let's just see that with model only so we can kind of really appreciate this. Okay, let's have a look. Here we go. Excellent. Right, so there we are. So uh, how do we go about this? Well, okay, um, let's go to a sort of jumping off point here. So here's our lamp and here's our motion, okay? Now, um, first of all, what I needed to do was uh, the lamp uh, uh, was unrigged, which obviously isn't really a surprise because the modeler probably wasn't expecting us to animate it. Um, but it wasn't that difficult to rig. Um, what I did is I kind of, um, uh, I, I actually ended up rigging it inside of Motion Builder. Um, purely because um, I, I did rig it in Maya. Uh, and what I did is, is the way this is being modelled, uh, what you'll find is each of these parts is kind of made up of, each of these elements is kind of made up of lots of components. Uh, and I kind of, I grouped them together. Uh, I, I grouped them together and then I parented the groups to to uh, the respective joints. And that all works brilliantly inside of Maya. But I found when I bought it into Motion Builder, Motion Builder doesn't seem to like groups um, uh, directly underneath uh, connected to joints. It does funny things with, with the bones and things like that. If anyone could come back to me and tell me why that is, then let me know. But I got I got really kind of weird results. So I ended up having to re-rig it inside of Motion Builder, okay? But effectively, uh, the, the solution I kind of ended up with was, um, what I did was I would kind of um, take an element. So I'm trying to think of an example here, if I can come up with an example. Okay, so I would take kind of um, uh, uh, one element here uh, that is going to be parented to that joint. I would parent that to the joint, and then I would just just to kind of make things cleaner, parent all the other elements. So all the other things that kind of make up this bit of the lamp here that's going to follow this joint, I'd parent all of that to that. So all these other bits that are going to follow that joint are all parented to that. Okay. Now again. I could have gone into, um, I, I, yeah, there's no reason why I couldn't have gone into, um, 
Sorry, so there's a phone call there. Um, right, so uh, there's no reason why I couldn't have combined these meshes inside of Maya, and that would have made the whole thing look a bit neater. Um, but really, this, the, the headline of this is, for whatever reason, if you just have a group and you just group geometries and you just parent groups to n joints, it seems to be fine in Maya, but when you move that as an FBX into Motion Builder, it seems to have a problem with it. And even when I built groups inside a motion builder which it doesn't really have it has like null objects which you can use as groups um it, it seemed to have problems as well so yeah that was my kind of a, a, a approach was um uh parent one element uh that's going to be parented to that joint to the joint and then parent everything else that's going to be parented to that joint to that element and that seemed to work okay but it does kind of make things a little bit messy in here in terms of rigging okay uh, so it might be easier actually just to combine the elements uh, the appropriate elements inside a motion builder but anyway um, so I've basically created a skeleton rig and parented and basically the rig is driving the uh, uh, various elements of this geometry simply by those elements being parented to the appropriate node inside of this skeleton okay uh, just to demonstrate that so if I select Let's select a node here. I've got node 2 selected, and if I rotate that, you can see that everything there rotates. So all my FK stuff is working nicely. Okay, so um, what we want to do then is we need to put an IK chain. So I'll just bring up my notes. Um, so what we need to do is we need to add an IK chain uh, to this, uh, um, to this uh, lamp so that we can actually drive it uh, using uh, an end effector and an inverse kinematic chain. Great. So in Nuke, uh, sorry, in Maya, or sorry, in Motion Builder, we can do that using constraints. So I'm going to go into constraints, okay, and I'm going to go and just drag this onto the stage. So we're going to use an IK chain constraint. Just drag that onto our stage, okay, and I'm just going to rearrange our window here so we can see it's a little bit better brilliant okay and then what we want to do is just select our first joint so what we're going to do is the um, IK chain is going to go from uh, what I want to do is I want it to go from I want the IK chain actually to just drive this part of the lamp okay uh, and then I want this part here to be driven by uh, to, dri to be driven by uh, the base to be driven by the foot OK, so you just see that it, it's I, I don't want the whole I, this thing to be th do the whole IK chain. OK, and I found I got better results if I did it this way. So uh, I'm going to select node one, which is this part of the lamp here. OK, and once you've selected the bit that you want to um, use uh, inside these boxes here and the way to do it is once it's selected, uh, I've got the Maya interface on here. So all I do is I press X and then just mouse drag from anywhere in this workspace onto uh, the box that I want to put it in. So so this is going to be our first joint. Okay, so node one here is going to be our first joint. And then um, this node, so it's going to be the head node. So it's going to be the last node, which I think is node four. Uh, in fact, uh, yeah, node four, okay. Uh, so we do, this last node actually is just going to rotate this. So we're going to so th so that's kind of like the end node. I don't I don't want to drive it from there. I want to drive it from. I want this to be the end node. Okay. So I want the chain to go from here to here. Okay. Um, okay. So then I'm going to go X drag and drag that on there. Okay. Um, and then what I need to do is I I need it to follow like uh, 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 I need to put a marker in my scene here to kind of use as a handle for for the end effector okay so I'm just going to go into if I go right click here and just go insert object marker okay uh, and I should have a marker in here somewhere yes that's there we're just going to move that into a position that is sensible so let's move it about here okay so here we go. I might just want to check that in another orientation. Here we go. I could do this in the 2D views if I wanted to do this properly, but I'm sort of roughly doing it. It's fine. Okay, here we go. And whack that onto there. Okay, there we go. Um, okay, so that's our marker there. Uh, and then what we do is um, we'll go back. So I, I want to go back to editing my um uh, my chain ik constraint so you'll see in my scene you've got all the geometry here uh and our skeleton nose and if i keep going you've got 
audio cameras and here we've got constraints so all the constraints are here so I can go back to my constraints by going into this list here and there's the chain IK there as well so if I double click on the chain IK we pull that constraint back up so with this marker selected I can then just go X drag and drag that effect onto there excellent okay so now what we want to do is just click snap and we'll make that active uh, ooh, although my marker has just move straight onto there that wasn't quite what I was expecting but anyway there we go and you'll see that I have now got uh, an inverse kinematic chain excellent okay fabulous okay so now what we want to do is uh, uh, so that's how you do an inverse kinematic how you take your joint system and apply an inverse kinematic chain to it in motion builder okay uh, now what I want to do is uh, drive this marker position using um this uh character okay so what i'm going to do is this character is kind of not really the right size at the moment okay and if i just move through the animation okay you'll see here we are we've got the animation there it's sort of jumping great it's not actually going in the same direction as the lamp now i could move the lamp or i could move the uh, actual animation i'm going to move the animation okay so the animation is in our scene is actually underneath this BVH reference here, okay? Uh, and what I can do is, I can use this BVH reference, if I rotate this BVH reference, I can use that to actually rotate the entire animation, okay? And in fact, what I might do is just actually hard code that so I know I've got it exactly 90, degree, 90 degrees, there we go. Let's see where we are now. Uh, and that's looking pretty good. I might just move that to the side And let's just play our jump motion now. So we've got our jump motion now here. Um, so I'm just going to snap out of. There we are. So just get, getting where the, the start position of our jump motion is. I'm going to line that up with our lamp as well. So at the moment, the character isn't the same size. So I can easily, again, with the BVH reference selected, and you can see all the hips, everything's underneath that. But just with the BVH selected, I can just scale the entire motion up. Uh, as needed so here we are I'm just going to scale it uh, I might have to just compensate with it uh, compensate with another movement that's fine okay and you can see that I can scale that and get that to kind of fit the right sort of size that I want excellent okay super okay so um, what I want to do then is I'm kind of just, I want to just kind of find a frame where it's kind of jumping I just want to get a frame where it's kind of level and it's kind of suitable. Okay, that's fine. So what I want to do then is first of all, I so I want to apply two uh, parent-child constraints. And what I want to do is parent this effector, so so uh, the marker here that we've got that's driving this, uh, the top of this uh, lamp. I want to parent that to the head. And then what I want to do is take the, uh, uh, the joint that's driving the base of this lamp. So that's going to be the... the, the, the um, skeleton root that's driving the base of this lamp that okay I want to take that and um, uh, and, and attach that to a foot okay great okay so let's first of all let's put on our first part parent child constraint so this one we're going to use for the head so I'm going to just drag that onto the stage and you see it pops up in the window here okay and the constrained object is going to be the marker that we created. So I'm just going to select that in the scene. So this is the marker that's acting as our end effector here. Okay. I'm just going to go X drag, drag that on. Okay. And then the source object. Uh, and actually what I might do as well before applying this constraint. Uh, in fact, I'm going to do that in a minute. The source object, I want to be the head. Okay, and I wanted to just try and click on it directly, but it might be that I need to go through the hierarchy. Let's just, so if I go into this BVH reference, I should just be able to go down the hierarchy and pick out the bit that I want. Let's have a look. Spine, neck, getting closer. Here we go, head. And I actually want the head end here. Okay, so it's this bit here. Another option is uh, we could... Um, uh, we could uh, characterize the, we could characterize this motion capture um, uh, this motion capture rig here um, and um, 
uh, use that if you wanted to um, and, and obviously just use the control rig and that you might find that easier selecting elements on the control rig rather than just working with directly with the motion capture joints but I'm just going to work directly with the motion capture joints that we've got okay so I'm going to go and X drag that to uh, the parent here and then before I kind of activate this uh, what I want to do is just drag this just so it's kind of level with it okay all right and then I'm gonna go snap all right so that's now active okay uh, I don't want to drive it just yet because what I want to do is um, I don't want to move the play button just yet uh, because uh, I want to do this constraint here first okay so now what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another parent child constraint and this time what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the foot so the foot of the character let's have a look here sure why it's not letting me select joints but there we are okay so um, I've got right shoulder lower back okay so I'm just I, I could take the right or left foot but I'm gonna just gonna take the the right foot okay uh, I'm I kind of like to take the the toe and use the toe because it kind of gives me like the the, the 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 angle that the foot's moving in uh, but you could experiment with these you've got the foot the toe base and the and the end toe as well but I'm going to use the right toe base okay so that's selected I'm just going to go X drag and that's going to be my constrained object okay oh sorry that's going to be my source object let's try that again put that on the source uh, that's right it's not a problem because I haven't actually activated this and uh, I can overwrite this constrained bit anyway so um, now what we want to do is we want to um, select the skeleton root so I'm going to select the skeleton root joint here. So I've selected that there, and that's the root joint at the base of our lamp. Okay, we're going to drag and use that as the constrained object. Okay, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go snap. Okay, um, actually, uh, I'd quite like to see if I can find it where it's a little bit flatter, but I oh know we'll, we'll we'll stick with that. So I'm going to go snap. Okay, and now when I play my motion, what do we get? Let's have a look. So this is looking pretty good. There we go. Now you can see we've got a problem here. When our character turns round, um, none of the lamp turns round with it. Okay, uh, which isn't quite what we want. Okay. So first of all, what we want is we want the head of the lamp to kind of move with the head. Okay. So we're going to add another parent child constraint. Okay. With all these parent child constraints, you can see them all kind of piling up in here uh, it may be you want to give these names uh, you can do that you can just go right click and you just go rename so you might be you want to name each constraint so it makes it easier for you to kind of access them and, and, and edit them etc etc um, I'm not going to bother doing that here but that might be something you want to do okay so what I want to do is I want to um, uh, I want to select uh, the uh, uh, the uh, skeleton node here okay this skeleton node here all right okay uh, and then what I want to do is just drag that so what I'm going to do is constrain I basically want to constrain the head of this um, uh, the head of this lamp here to uh, this head here okay so let's try that uh, yeah so at the moment we're just constraining the marker Actually, what I want to do is, which is the end effect, affecting this joint chain here, but it's not affecting this bit here. Okay, so I want to drag this. I want to constrain this as well. Okay, right. Let's just go X drag. So that's going to be our constrained object. And then what we're going to do is select the head again. So let's go back down here. Uh, again, another way of selecting all these elements as well is you can you can open up like a schematic view as well. So if I, you know, you could just go um, uh, add a viewer. So we can have another viewer here on the side and then have that as a schematic view and then allow you to kind of, uh, and then you can select, uh, have a look. here we go. You can select bits of the skeleton. You can see you can select bits of the skeleton using this as well. Skeleton node, uh, that is the skeleton of the lamp. Where is the skeleton of our, here we are. There's the skeleton of our BVH file. And then you could go into here and that would allow you to select everything as well. So you might find that an easier approach 
than the way I'm doing it in here. Okay, but that's entirely up to you. I'm going to close that for the moment, but that's another option that you've got. Okay, so we're going to constrain this head, this node to the head. So we've got the head selected. In fact, I want to select the head end, not the head. Okay, so let's have the head end. I'm just going to go Alt drag. Oops, sorry, not Alt drag. Sorry, X drag. Okay, and then I'm just going to go snap. Now, hopefully, let's have a look what we've got now. So that's great. So the head of the lamp's moving, but what's happening is this um, this part of the uh, animation here, um, or, or this joint isn't isn't rotating appropriately. Okay, so everything's sort of kind of rotating around it, and this is kind of just still facing the wrong direction. So let's come back to our starting point here, and what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the IK chain uh, constraint that we created earlier. If I double click on that, and what we can do is we can add uh, a pole vector, okay? So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna create another marker here. I'm gonna parent that marker to, um, uh, I'm gonna parent this marker to the back of the character, uh, of, of our, um, uh, of our mocap joint system okay so I'm just gonna pick a spine any spine that's kind of relative here so I'll probably pick this sort of area here okay um, and I'm gonna parent it to that so I'm gonna parent the marker to that and then that's gonna act as my pole vector okay so let's create a marker so let's go right click so just at the top let's go insert object marker here's our marker let's put it in here Again, I could probably do this in 2D space, and that would be a better way of doing it, but I'm just going to do it this way anyway. Okay, let's put it out there. So that's going to act as our pole vector. So what we're doing is the pole vector is kind of telling which way the joint should rotate. Okay, um, so then I'm going to use, I'm going to drag another parent child constraint here, um, and then what we're going to do is we're going to use the lower back. So let's see if I can actually select it this time. What have we got here? I think I've got a right hip joint selected let's have a look what about this one here spine here we go lower back yeah so I want to set I'm just going to select in the system because I know what I'm selecting then I'm going to select lower back okay uh, go back to my constraint here so this is the, the last constraint that I created and I'm just going to go uh, X drag so this will act as my source oh hang on I need to select lower back again let's try that again uh, Lower back. Uh, oh, I see. Yeah, let's try it again. So I've got my constraint selected here. So I need to have my constraint viewable in here, and then select lower back. I think I clicked twice on lower back, and it kind of brought that up into here and um, took focus away from the constraint, which is obviously not what I wanted. Uh, so click lower back. Go X drag. Uh, and that will be our source object and then the marker here that we've just created will be our constrained object I'm going to do a snap okay and then what should happen is so this isn't going to fix it just yet but what should happen is when we play this you can see the marker is kind of rotating around the character with it so it's gonna there which means it's perfect for acting as our pole vector great okay so let's try that now okay so then what we're going to do is go back to our uh, IK chain here and then what we'll say is this marker here is going to be our pole vector okay uh, might just resnap it there we go and then hopefully if we play this now we will get the result that we want Excellent. So I hope you found that fun, and I hope that gives you some, you know, is a, a, a jumping-off point so for some real ideas of things that you can do uh, with Motion Builder and how you can use constraints to kind of animate all kinds of objects that you might not have thought about um, animating or driving with motion capture. Uh, thank you for watching, and um, I hope you have fun with it.